that's fine too. But I just need to get at them first. I need to make sure my tech is working. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know that some of you will be watching this on Wednesday. It looks like everybody's doing really well with the whole life challenge just in terms of uh, the scores that I'm seeing posted, the frequencies that they're being posted, what you are sharing inside of the uh, live stream or the news feed, the, the team stream. That's so important. What a, it, it's just a great communication tool. Hey John, how are you? Can you type in a comment to let me know that you can hear me? Perfect. So I know we got John here. Ooh, I said Jen, but it's John. I think we have just a minute or two before we get to seven o'clock. But anyway, the the uh, team newsfeed is such a phenomenal way to help each other, to encourage each other. Love it. That's great. So make sure you keep those questions coming there as well. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of things and then start to answer a few questions for you. I know I've had some questions on recipes and cooking. Yes, the whole life challenge definitely involves some cooking because it is, there's change, right? I, there are certain go-to foods that I have that are not part of the plan that I've chosen. The, and, and you can, again, you can choose the kickstart or if you've chosen one that's a little bit more advanced and you're struggling with it a little bit, you can go down. But if you haven't already done this, make sure that you do the whole, there's a whole life challenge recipe book. I think there's 75 recipes inside of it. Make sure that you download that off the whole life challenge website. If you need a link, let me know. I've posted it a couple times, but I'm happy to put it back up there again if you cannot find it. There are some phenomenal recipes in there. And this, I don't know, I'm going to hold this up, see if you can see this. Can you maybe see that? This was the Chipotle Sunflower Seed Dip. First of all, incredibly easy. This took all of five minutes. Even John could make it. I was trying to force him to make it, but he made me make it. Five minutes and a food processor. It had sunflower seeds, walnuts, a can of diced tomatoes or fresh tomatoes, whatever you prefer, lemon juice, a half of a clementine or a seedless orange, chipotle pepper. We didn't have any chipotle pepper, believe it or not. John eats a lot of hot stuff. We used some, um, we didn't have the pepper spices. We used a liquid that he had around the house and some salt. Throw it all in the food processor, serve it with carrot, celery, broccoli. It was amazing so go ahead take a look at that one that was the chipotle sunflower seed dip very very good next one and this one is up this is the tomatillo turkey stew now chris i know grows she's out gardening that's been one of her exercises lately i know how much she loves it so i'm gonna guess you're not probably pulling anything fresh from the garden yet but she grows tomatillos in the garden and we had a tomatillo chili recipe that we shared last October that's just amazing. So, but this is a tomatillo stir turkey stew. You can find tomatillos in your produce section. Now, if you've never worked with them before, they have a very, so it looks like a green tomato. They have a kind of like a hard leaf that goes around the outside. And it can be a little sticky when you do that. So when you're looking for fresh ones, you, you really don't want the leaves that are super sticky. Those seem to be pretty close to going bad. You take off the leaves, you wash them, and you work with them kind of like you would a tomato. When I've cooked them, they have a translucent look to them after they have been cooked. So uh, the tomatillo turkey stew. But I, again, there's 75 recipes in there. Those happen to be my two um, faves that I have tried. So if you have some questions, go ahead and put your questions down below. I'm not seeing any yet. We're going to go on to the raffle. So last week, 
our prize, our starting off prize, because like I said, I know, there's really no prizes for this game, but what's a game without a few prizes? A couple little things. So um, I said, I want to raffle off a prize every single week, and I have some great prizes to give away. So let me tell you about the prize first. The prize, you might not be able to see this real well and try and tilt it just a little. Okay. Uh, this is a product called Enhancer. And what makes Enhancer special is it's full of aloe vera. It's a very, it's moisturizing. It's a very light moisturizer. This is a great product for sunburns, especially, you know, we're coming up on that time of year for being out in the sun. Men love this product. It is wonderful for shaving or the little burn that they get after shaving. Some guys I know actually shave with this. Some use apply it after shaving. It is also a wonderful product if you have somebody in your life or perhaps you don't use a lot of moisture on your face. Maybe you live in a climate that has a lot of, uh, that's very dewy, has a lot of humidity because we're definitely coming into that time of year. This is a nice light moisturizer that you can put onto your face without feeling overwhelmed that it's just way too heavy. So that is Enhancer. So the, the challenge was to score points seven days in a row. And since it was the first time I put together that challenge, I didn't even think that, gee, it's seven days in a row where, hey, even on the whole life challenge, we get a lead, little wee lay, lee away here and there, right? Um, so, but it was seven days. That's what I put in advance. And there were four of you who did that. So I got, let's see, I'm not sure if you can see this. I have Terry's name here. I have Sue's name here. I got John's name here. And I got Mary's name here. So congratulations to all of you, first of all, for doing the challenge for seven days in a row. I This is, John, I'm using your hat. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, Titleist. Um, upside down Titleist hat. So I have put all the names in here. And let's see, let's go ahead and I am going to draw out one of the names, who have I got? I have Mary. Oh my goodness, girl, that's your second prize. She won a bottle of tea green uh, from the last raffle that we did from the kickoff. So man, you're on a roll. But I tell you, this week's challenge, you are going to have to get on your horse because boy, one of you are just, you're killing it. This week's challenge goes right along with our new well-being challenge. So the new well-being for challenge for the week is on a daily basis to comment on three of your teammates' posts to offer encouragement or solutions, uh, to give them a little like. So if you haven't already been doing that, go ahead and get on it. Uh, keep keep doing it. But boy, I got to tell you, Sue, you have been all over that news feed. Awesome, awesome, awesome. She's given out some nice congratulations. So you guys got a ways to go to catch up with Sue. Just, just got to tell you. Not that I want you not to do it. Just you got a ways to go to catch up with Sue. Okay. So John, do you have any questions? If you could, please go ahead and type them in. And as I said, I know that some of you cannot be there live. Um, let me share with you a couple of the questions that you asked about. So a, a question that comes up frequently is what is exercise? What's 10 minutes of exercise? And 10 minutes of exercise, you get to define it. Essentially, what that 10 minutes of exercise should be is something that is challenging for you. As an example, if you already go to the gym and you work out for a half hour, three days a week, you could count that as exercise. But part of this challenge is maybe doing something just a tiny, tiny bit more. So what I would suggest that you do is do 10 minutes of something different. So if you go to the gym, work out three days a week, add 10 minutes to work out. Add in a 10 minute uh, core session. Add in 10 minutes of squats. Add that in. 
The important thing to remember about the exercise is you don't have to do that 10 minutes all at once. It can be done in a variety of ways. I have shared with you a couple of my favorite 10 minute workouts from Fitness Blender. You may not have seen them in the news feed, but they're coming out on the Facebook, uh, the Facebook post on Age Well with CJ. There are some 10 minute exercises in there. My favorite one is a 10 minute squat exercise. Now here's the cool part. So you're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes, and since all of you have such great smiles, I'm going to bet that you already do. Just think, you could knock out squats in that two-minute time frame, and then you only have eight minutes left to go. I have a set of 15 stairs here at my house. One of my breaks is to walk out of my office and go up and down the stairs a couple of times. Definitely gets my heart hot puffing and you know my lungs working my heart going uh, so going up the stairs up and down the stairs if you just break that out into the course of the day you are going to have 10 minutes in no time no time whatsoever um, I will tell you one of the habits that John and I used to do we've done this on and off for years and why we get away from it I really don't know he and I have walked together and just that 10 minutes together alone, well, not really no cell phone, but I don't use the cell phone. We take it with us, but don't really look at it. Just that 10 minutes alone is just such a wonderful time spending together. I was going to go for a walk myself today. He's like, no, I'll come along with you. And it was a beautiful, wonderful afternoon. We went for, actually, it was about 15 minutes. We went for a nice walk. We have a little hill that we walk up. It's just really enjoyable. So, if you can't put the whole 10 minutes together, think of things that you can do in small increments while you're doing other things. If you're standing there and you are doing dishes, you're in the kitchen or you're in the kitchen cooking, do some calf raises. That's exercise. Anywhere where you can blend that ex exercise into your life. So that was one of those questions. Um, another one of the questions, and this topic came up, I'm going to grab this. So last week, um, Sue asked about a drink called Buy. Have you? So I went out and bought it. It is, oh, I can't say this word, a Penamea pomegranate maybe. Uh, and she said this was her favorite flavor. I had taken a look at the ingredients. It does have a proprietary sweetener in it. So erythritol, stevia leaf extract. I did some uh, research on it and I think I posted it in the, in fact I know I did, in the wellness feed. I had not heard of erythritol before. It's a sugar alcohol sweetener that right now is widely acceptable as a good alternative to sweetener. I can tell you this, aspartame is not. Stay away from aspartame if you are drinking Diet Coke your yogurts, things like that, with aspartame in them, there, there is just so much bad, bad, bad information as well as potentially bad information about aspartame out there that is not one of the sweeteners that I would recommend that you use. But um, erythritol and the stevia leaf extract are generally, by motion nutritionists, are generally very highly recommended because one thing they don't do is they don't spike our blood glucose level. Now, as we get older, if we start spiking that blood glucose level and our pancreas starts kind of working wonky, we can be very susceptible to different types of diabetes. So we really don't want to do that. But anyway, Sue mentioned this drink and I went out and I bought some just to try it because I had not tried it. So the ingredients are... Um, acceptable within certainly within her plan well within my plan too um it's good now it's sweet i'm going to tell you that this is very i'm going to take a little sip of this because my mouth is dry it is definitely sweet i think i would cut this a little bit with my soda stream but that is a great alternative one of the other questions came in, came in about sleeping, um, changing some habits. So I, I like to qualify sleep as two different things. And again, there is an ebook inside of the whole life challenge with five, count them five, five habits that you can change to get better sleep. 
But essentially, look at your sleep in two different ways. What the Whole Life Challenge asks you to do is just that little stretch. It's not asking you to go from six hours to eight hours. Now, here's what CJ is going to tell you. The myth around sleep is this, is that as you, we age, we don't need as much sleep. Now, nah, baloney. Yes, we do. We still need the same amount of sleep. We need an average of seven to nine hours of sleep. Sleep is essential for your body's recovery. So many studies about what sleep does for us, including weight management. If you don't get enough sleep, it becomes very, very difficult to manage your weight. So sleep is critical. There are really two kinds of problem sleepers. There are people who have some problems occasionally, and that would be me because maybe I'm not as disciplined about the time I go to bed. I'm very disciplined about the time I wake up. My body gets up at 530. So if I don't go to bed in enough time to get enough sleep, I'm, I'm going to pay for it in the morning. That's just plain and simple how my body works. So I am occasionally not a disciplined sleeper. I'm a good sleeper, but sometimes my discipline gets sloppy and I don't get enough sleep. The other type of sleeper is somebody who has chronic sleep problems. Now, if you have chronic sleep problems, I just had a friend who went in, she was having chronic sleep problems, turns out, and she's not the kind of person who looks like she would have sleep apnea, but literally she was, she was not breathing, I think she said eight or nine times a night on average. That's a lot. So she had to get the breathing machine. But she is sleeping better. She's well rested. It has allowed her body to start to recover from a back injury that she had. So if you have questions about whether or not you really have some sleep issues, you need to get to a sleep center. That would be my recommendation. If you think you might be like me, just a little bit undisciplined, there are five things in that ebook that can help you. The one that helps me the most is this. It's my iPhone, right? You can on here. Uh, Sam, looking for your questions. Um, the thing that helps me the most is the bedtime app. It's an iPhone. I've got the bedtime app. So 10 minutes before my bedtime, it makes this nice little noise, bing, 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 bing. And then I get to go to sleep. And it gives me enough time to wind down, to get things done for the day. But it reminds me, because I'll tell you, my poor discipline at times, if I didn't have that app going on telling me it was time to get ready to go to bed, I would not be there. In bed, that is. Not be there. Anyway. Those were the couple questions. I am not seeing any other questions in here. So perfect. So just a couple things that are coming up. Uh, don't forget, we still have the raffle going on. Oh, and I didn't tell you what the prize was. I told you what the contest was. Let me tell you what the prize is. Firewalker. Maybe you can see this. It's gold. Can you see? Yeah, Firewalker. Oh. This stuff is amazing. Uh, so firewalkers, Polynesian firewalkers, used to use a plant called the tea leaf on the bottom of their foot to help to relieve the soothing and burning that they would get while they were walking over the hot, hot coals. I was just sitting here thinking, I, why would anyone like even try to walk on, over hot coals? I, I might need to look up the history of why there were fire walkers in the first place. But anyway, that's what they did is they used this particular plant to soothe their feet as they after they walked over the hot coals. And this product is made up of that plant. And I'm going to tell you more about this product next week because this also does a lot of things with a um, charity called Force for Good and helping the native people who have inspired that particular plant. So not only is it good for your bodies, it is good for the environment. And next week's raffle winner, which is the person who comments for six days in a row on three people a day inside of the news feed is going to be put into a raffle for a firewalker. So Mary, you got some enhancer coming from me. Perfect. I'm going to take one more look for questions. Doesn't look like we have any questions coming in. If you do, you can catch me uh, in the news feed. I'm in the news feed in the morning and in the evening, definitely twice a day. You can always catch me via text. You got my email as well as my cell phone if you're part of the Whole Life Challenge. 
Uh, make sure that you are looking on the Facebook page. I'm posting additional resources there every day. That's agewellwithcj.com. Next week, we're going to have this same Q&A here at 7 o'clock. Just also wanted to let you know at 6 p.m., just before this, that's my weekly live show. I am tying it into the Whole Life Challenge for you. I'm going to be talking about nutrition next week and, and how we make some of the choices that are going to help us as we get past the age of 40, which I think, yeah, everybody in the challenge is over the age of 40, and some of us are well over the age of 40. But I'm going to give you some more information on how we can fuel bodies that are changing, both in terms of how, how they perform as well as what we weigh, all those types of things. So that will be my regular Facebook show next uh, Tuesday at 6 p.m. If not, I'll see you back here. If you have questions, email them to me if you want them answered on this show. Or uh, I just told you how to reach me. Don't have to tell you again. Okay, have a great night, everybody.